The Dutch and the Danes are to supply Ukraine with F-16 fast jets, rewarding months of diplomatic pressure on NATO allies from President Zelensky. As wildfires rage in southern Europe and temperatures soar, firefighters still struggle to keep blazes under control. Russia's Luna 25 unmanned spacecraft has crashed into the moon after spinning into uncontrolled orbit. Spain have lifted the Women's World Cup trophy for the first time after beating England 1-0 thanks to a 29th minute goal from Olga Carmona. Organisers of the 2024 Paris Olympics have been left with a pollution problem after water tests prompted the cancellation of a swimming event in the Seine. The president of Ukraine with the Danes who've pledged to supply his country with 19 F-16 fast jets. A chance to sit in the cockpit and to savour the result of months of diplomatic pressure. The US giving the green light for allies to help Ukraine recover control of its skies. It won't be an overnight solution. Ukrainian pilots may not be at the controls until Christmas. But with the Dutch also offering 42 of the jets, there's fresh hope for victory. Можуть прискорити цей процес дуже сильно, що в небі а, домінує Російська Федерація і що окрім літаків, літаками ми не обмежуємося, ми говоримо про протиповітряну оборону, бо попереду зима. As the counteroffensive continues on the ground, Ukraine's pilots, engineers and support crews are all training to work in and around the F-16s they'll be receiving. The Dutch and Danish governments are also part of the coalition providing the training on NATO's fixed-wing fighters. Authorities in Turkey evacuated another five villages near the northeastern border with Turkey on Sunday. Strong winds whipped up the flames and civil protection authorities warned of an extreme fire risk on Monday in the region around the capital Athens and other parts of southern Greece. No. In Oratova in Tenerife, the last remnants of fires which broke out on Tuesday were still being tackled. As weather conditions improved, firefighters were more able to tackle the blaze. Police in the Canary Islands have confirmed a wildfire raging on the Spanish island of Tenerife was started deliberately. Three lines of investigation have been opened, but there's been no confirmation of arrests. Heat waves have continued to hit areas of southern Europe, including eastern France, with experts suggesting the frequency of unusually late high temperatures are down to global warming. Temperatures are predicted to persist all week. The good news is indeed that as of um, uh, today, the uh, storage is at 
89.89%, uh, which is indeed um, uh, excellent uh, news. Member states see and understand that it's extremely important to stick to the uh, obligation to refill our gas storage facilities. And um, this is an uh, ongoing process and we are very much uh, on track there. Russia's Luna 25 spacecraft has crashed into the moon, the country's space agency said on Sunday, after spinning into uncontrolled orbit. Roscosmos said it lost contact with the probe on Saturday after it ran into trouble while preparing for its pre-landing orbit. Luna 25 was scheduled to land on the south pole of the moon on Monday, racing to reach the surface ahead of an Indian spacecraft. The unmanned robot lander is the first launched by Russia since 1976, when it was part of the Soviet Union. At least three people in Romania have died from the West Nile virus, an illness spread by mosquitoes, and for which there's no vaccine or antiviral treatment. More than 10% of the country's mosquitoes carry the virus, according to a recent study. Eight out of 10 people infected with the virus will show no symptoms. But in rare cases, it can cause a serious infection of the nervous system, leading to paralysis, convulsions, or loss of vision. Vulnerable people are advised to cover their body while outside to avoid being bitten and to use anti-mosquito sprays. Argentina suffered a political earthquake and the response of the markets has been clear. Prices have jumped 30 percent in the two days following the victory of the anti-establishment populist Javier Millet in last Sunday's primaries. And the peso plunged by 18 percent. The question is whether he or anyone can really uh, correct the economy in, in Argentina is, is it's going to be tough. There are a few bright spots which I'll talk about, but these are structural issues, for example. Public spending represents 40% of the country's GDP. Um, that means that you know, if we're going to address the debt problem, the issue of, of inflation and the tendency of the central bank to print currency, uh, it's going to have to cut dramatically subsidies. In a country struggling with annual inflation of over 100%, growing poverty and a rapidly depreciating currency, the vote has been a response to anger against the political class. But does it really represent an ideological shift in Argentina? I don't think so much that Malay's surprise uh, victory in the primaries um, really represents a wholesale shift uh, within the Argentine electorate towards the right and towards this sort of view of libertarian, you know, almost he calls himself an anarcho-libertarian, uh, of sort of a, a much reduced state. Um, reflects uh, core popular values in Argentina. I think Argentina remains very much a center-left country in its orientation. The corruption and lack of renewal of the political class has had consequences throughout the region. We've seen them in the United States, Brazil and much of Latin America. Faced with their sense of insecurity, people are looking for extreme alternatives. There is a sense that there's been no political renovation, that politicians are unaccountable, but also the sense of profound economic insecurity that's driving this. In surveys done in Latin America by Vanderbilt University, more than 80% of respondents believe that half or more of their politicians were corrupt. When people don't trust their politicians, when they don't trust their institutions, they look for extreme answers outside the system. 
Spain produced a stunning performance to clinch their first Women's World Cup title on Sunday with a 1-0 win over England. Olga Carmona's superb finish in the 29th minute proved to be the difference between the two sides as La Roja made history. The Lionesses, who were bidding to bring a World Cup trophy back to England for the first time since 1966, pushed in the dying minutes, but it wasn't to be. Spain are the fifth winners in nine editions of the Women's World Cup. Sam Ashu was there. Well, it'll go down as one of sport's most remarkable achievements. The majority of this Spanish squad were on strike 11 months ago. Now they're champions of the world. At 23 years old, Olga Carmona became the youngest player since 2011 to score in a FIFA Women's World Cup final. She is the history maker. This La Roca side are the record breakers. It brings to an end a fine tournament here in Australia and New Zealand. Samashu for Euronews in Sydney. It was meant to be a trial run for the 2024 Paris Olympics, but pollution concerns meant the plug had to be pulled on an open water swim in the Seine on Sunday. Although competitors had swum in the river earlier in the week, the latest water quality test gave organizers no choice. On n'a pas encore d'explication sur la dégradation de la qualité de l'eau. Elle a été constatée avec deux mesures qui ont montré des divergences. Euh, ce qu'on disait euh, précédemment. Aujourd'hui, il y a une enquête euh, qui est en cours pour essayer de comprendre l'origine de cette dégradation. Paris isn't the first Olympic Games to face pollution concerns over open water swims. Tokyo and Rio had similar problems. However, since triathlon was introduced as an Olympic sport in Sydney in 2000, no Olympic triathlon has ever had to convert to a biathlon.